All right, Kenton, welcome. Glad you could be here at Midwest Machinery today. Um, let's go over at a high level what a VAV box is and what type of overall HVAC system you're gonna use a VAV box on. Okay, good question. VAV stands for variable air volume, normally used in conjunction with uh, air handling units. Primarily, um, the most efficient way of moving air and keeping particular zones in a temperature where they need to be. Say you have a, a zone next to a window in the early morning that's cold, needs more heat. Um, say you have a, an office next to it that, that for some reason needs to stay cold. Maybe you've got uh, a manager in there that likes it, it cooler. You could have multiple zones with multiple temperature requirements and VAV products seem to, or should I say, basically deliver the type of air that you need for each particular zone. So. Um, just to go in uh, a little bit farther before we, we talk about the, the particulars of the, of the air valve itself, um, one of the things you want to make sure when you're looking at your units, you want to make sure that the unit itself has uh, a very low leak rate. Uh, air handling unit can deliver uh, cold air down the ductwork, but if you have high leak rates, that air handler is going to continually uh, push and get more CFM through there just to meet the conditions that are needed for a particular room if the VAV uh, leaks. So the whole idea is to get a unit that is very well, um, what do I want to say, not only insulated but, uh, but is uh, uh, put together in a way that you have the minima or minimal amount of leaks coming from any side that's on that VAV box. And how does EnviroTech solve the leak problem versus maybe some other manufacturers? What is their what is their manufacturing process and take on that? Yeah, normally what we do, Brian, is that we will not just tape the outside, but we make sure that we put a, a bead of silicone around each of the edges so there would not be uh, any leaks coming out of that at all. So you've got a double penetration. You've got basically the silicone layer and you've got the uh, tape on the top. And that is correct. Okay. So that's what takes care of it. Now the VAV product itself can come in a variety of, of uh, genders. As you well know, air handling units will deliver the, the primary air down the, the air valve and it's cooled air. Okay. But what if you want to go into a scenario as we were discussing just a moment ago where the uh, where the air uh, in the room next to the window, you want it a little bit warmer. So mm -hmm. what you do is you apply either electric heat or you apply a hot water loop to that so you can temper the air that's going in there as far as temperature goes and deliver the proper amount um, and have that, that temperature be controlled by a single thermostat in that zone. So uh, as we mentioned, you can have it either in hot water or you can get it with electric heat. Um, with our electric heat system, it's a little bit different than our, manu our, our competition is that we, because we move the electric heat portion of it back farther. Now, the reason for that is so you have better mixing of the air, uh, a common issue that happens with a lot of uh, VAV boxes or with our competition's boxes are that the air may come off a, an elbow and you'll have one side that's going to have more velocity over those electric uh, elements than, on, than over the whole uh, electric uh, heat portion itself. So we move it back so it's a, there's a better mixing of that air and you have a less of a burnout rate when it comes to the electric heat. So in this particular unit, we've got our coil right here at the end. Correct. And there's plenty of room to come through here and make sure the even distribution. On, on hot water, yes, that's correct. Obviously, these come with one or two rows of hot water, uh, depending on, on what's needed. Um, obviously, depending on the, the, the inlet uh, temperature of the water, the CFM, et cetera, et cetera, that's, that's going to be mixing. So. Uh, we do have something special on our unit, and that is the inlet valve portion of it uh, comes with a special metering device, or should I say a, a sensing device, which will allow you to measure the velocity not over uh, that, that's coming through that, that, uh, that tube, but it's also measuring the exiting velocity, giving you a differential uh, measurement. Now, because we're giving that, that uh, differential measurement, it's usually 
the second one is normally referred to as the amount of static that you have in the, in the system. But that differential measurement will actually allow you to control down to a lower CFM uh, on your, your uh, VAV box, which allows you to either A, maybe size your box a little bit smaller, um, or um, what it will allow you to do is at least uh, control it more astutely even if you want to stay with the same size box. So we have what is called a flow star in our smaller units. We have these two separate tubes that go into the, the unit to the, the side here. Um, and then they're fed through plastic tubes into a controller that is inside here. Kenton, we have this smaller VAV system here. Um, tell me about what other products that Envirotech has as well. We also offer for replacement dual duct systems uh, and uh, those will take a hot deck and a, and a cold deck at the same time. Not very readily used because code doesn't uh, offer that and or um, allow that any longer as far as being for new specifications, new, new applications, but there are a lot of hospitals that have those out there. We also have varial, uh, variable volume um, products and constant volume products both in the, in the general height and the low profile type of, of offerings that go into um, larger facilities where you might have chill beams going around the outside of the facility. Okay. And what will happen, this usually is with a scenario where you've got a building that, um, uh, that is, is very well, very tight, very well insulated, enclosed. But what will happen in situations like that is you will have these chill beams along the outside that are gonna take care of that immediate need that's okay. coming in from the outside. And then what you'll have is you'll have a unit that is, a constant volume uh, unit that's sitting in the middle that's basically taking care of the middle portion of the envelope. And those units are unique from the standpoint that uh, along with having a heater coil and whether it's that coil is either hot water or you can have an electric heat, those units uh, can actually come with a, uh, a chilled water loop as well, but those are primarily for areas where you're not taking a lot of latent load in there and we call them our DOAS unit. Not that they are a DOAS unit, but they work in conjunction with the DOAS unit. That's, okay. that's an air handling unit on the outside is removing all that latent moisture before it's dumping it into the comfort cool space. And then, as I mentioned, the chill beams are taking care of the outside. In the core of the building is going to be the units where you have it tempering either a little bit chilled water, a little bit hot water. They do not have um, condensate uh, drains on them, but they do have a condensate drip pan. Okay. For drips only, <laughs> so there's not a lot of moisture. That's why those um, work that way. But we do happen to have 15,000 of those in operation, 8,000 in the Pentagon. So just, oh, wow. just an FYI. So that's not classified then, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not, not that I know of, no. But we've got another seven or eight thousand that are that are offshores, off uh, in the Pacific. So, what is the? I meant you. You mentioned uh, variable air versus constant air. What are the difference between those two? Well, when you have a, a a variable air volume, there is no motor on the inside of this. Okay. And what happens on a variable air volume? It's primarily from an air handling unit that has. A, um, a drive on it that will ramp up and ramp down based on what CFM is being required, what temperature is being required within a particular zone. A constant volume is going to be constantly um, giving you a constant flow of air, which if you get to the point where you don't need any more air in the room, you've got to dump the excess air that you're, you're uh, throwing into that ductwork some other place. Okay. So it becomes a little bit less um, energy efficient than a variable air volume and that's why in a vast majority of cases variable air volume units are what is the norm these days. Okay, great. Um, is there anything that makes Envirotech unique in terms of the control box? Uh, the control box will be a little bit on the larger size as you can see in this particular application and this particular unit even though it's a smaller unit the control box is, is sizable uh, because it's taking a controller that will fit on the inside 
and is taking the readings off the inlet and the outlet of the sensors that are in the inlet side of the VAB box and this basically is going to be controlling the damper on the inside as to how much more CFM you need uh, to put into the space. So the motor's in here as well? The motor, the controller is all one little uh, item if you okay. will. Okay, so. great. Is there anything within VAVs that could potentially be a source of noise complaints for occupants and tenants? And if so, what do you guys do to eliminate or greatly reduce something like that? It's a good, good question. The, the paddle on the inside, which again you, you can't see, but it has a, um, a uh, felt piece that fits around it. So as it shuts, it shuts very, very tight and it will not allow for whistling which sometimes happens with, with boxes. So when that opens up, you know, it, it basically will open to 100% and then close. Um, but that type of, of uh, closure will keep any additional sound that uh, is transmitted uh, to a bare minimum. Now you've got case radiated sound. Um, we try to build these things structurally so they're very, very um, sensitive to, to sound. In other words, we try to make them so they don't rattle because that's an important part of, of if you're sitting over uh, in a particular zone and your VAV product is rattling, that is a little bit less than desirable as far as it an application. It could be maddening if, yes. you're in some, if you're in an office and it just kept rattling all the time for sure. So we, we try to make a unit that is uh, very low on, on uh, decibel readings and we, we do our configurations. They're based on a, on a uh, the AHRI, uh, whatever it is for for uh, sound, but again we use it uh, from decibel readings uh, as opposed sure. to, to NC levels. So. Okay. Now one thing we also provide here in a, for our unit is, uh, and it's extremely important that we probably didn't mention before, and that is that the unit itself, when we put it together, is extremely airtight. Um, when an air handler is putting a lot of velocity of air down a, a piece of ductwork, the concern you have is to make sure that all of that air is being utilized where it should be and not being, um, what do I want to say, leaked out, you know, a badly constructed VAV box. So what we've done is we've made this, this portion extremely tight so our leak rate is, is probably one of the lowest, if not the lowest in the industry. So that helps when it comes to energy efficiency and we're highly into making sure that whatever we provide is going to be an efficient unit. Great. Ken, what do you say we uh, open up these panels up and take a look at what's on the inside? That's a good idea. Okay, just to continue with this anatomy of a, of a VAV box, and this happens to be our SDR model for single duct. You can see on the inside the uh, the flapper or the, the actual damper that we talked about earlier that has the, the uh, white felt, it's a rubberized felt material that goes up against and makes a very tight fit that keeps it from whistling. But you can see how this moves back and forth. It's a, actually a double um, uh, walled, if you will, uh, piece of, of sheet metal that, that's put together so it's not going to fall apart at all. Something else you will also note just uh, looking in there and also through this piece here, what we offer is a 5 8 inch uh, fiberglass. This can also come with a fiberglass with a scrim finish for hospital applications it's easier to clean or we also offer a uh, a, a uh, rubberized uh, closed cell foam that can be put in there as well in half inch and 5 8 inch tube or 5 8 inch uh, size as well. I did uh, forget to mention that one thing, uh, the reason for this access is not just necessarily to get into the damper because you don't need that, but the whole idea is to get in here to clean the coil. So as you can see the coil is not very far from where the, the point is here, but this is a very solid piece. It's not going to rattle. Um, and that's why we try to make it as, as uh, in the center, but as close to the, the uh, uh, return bins as we can. So should there be any need for cleaning, uh, you'll have it. All right, following uh, up our previous conversation as well regarding the shaft that, uh, that drives the damper on the inside, you see it's a composite shaft. 
Um, this thing is made out of extremely strong materials. In the 10 years I've been with the company, I have yet to have even one failure. These are uh, very, very strong and very much take care of the, the project and the work that needs to be done. The, root, the box itself is large enough to put a controller in here. As you can see, we've got a step-down transformer for communication capabilities. If you have any other sensing devices that need to fit within the, the junction box itself, you see that there's plenty of room to have uh, those items mounted in there as well.